a law company, a lone ranger, and as a peace and pharmacist, you're working with people. Where I'll be talking to you about the differences between a local pharmacist and a PCN pharmacist. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing great and I hope you're all having a great day. So welcome and if you're new, my name is Esther. I'm a qualified pharmacist in the UK. I currently work as a patient pharmacist. I used to be a local pharmacist, which brings about the old title of this video, where I'll be talking to you about the differences between a local pharmacist and a patient pharmacist. Let's give a clear um, overview first of all of what a local pharmacist is and what a PCN pharmacist is. Both of them are qualified pharmacists but the difference is that a local pharmacist is that you are self-employed. You are self-employed and you work when you want to. You can work anywhere. You can work either in a community, in a hospital or even in a GP. You just pick shifts around. You do your work and go. You have no business about whatever is going on. At that workplace you just go and do your thing and you leave. But with PCN pharmacist, it's like um, a different role for pharmacist in a GP. So with that, you can do it as self-employed, but it's most likely a permanent contract. Mostly, most of the time it's permanent contract. However, you need, um, I think they will train you, you need like a clinical diploma um, certificate, um, completion of that, which is on CPP and you need, um, I think you need to get to a point you do an independent prescriber to actually work successfully as a PCN pharmacist. So that's the main um, major difference of it. And I doubt that local pharmacists can work in PCN, but I haven't seen it because I've never been there. I haven't seen that situation before. However, most local pharmacists work mainly in community and a few of them work in hospital as well, but it is majorly in community setting of pharmacies, if that makes sense. So that is the overview of a PCN and a local pharmacist. And then, um, so, I'm going to talk about their key differences and I'm going to talk about in terms of their work setting and their um, in terms of patient interaction, the scope of practice and job benefits. So uh, in terms of work setting, in terms of work setting, local pharmacists, like I said, mainly work in a community setting or hospital. And what the work setting is that you go in there, you sign as responsible pharmacist and you do the tasks that the pharmacy or where you're working wants you to do. And the task technically is about checking prescriptions. I've never looked in a hospital, so I can't really speak for something I don't have experience on. But from a community perspective, because I look on for eight good months in a community, um, you go in there, you check prescriptions, check as many baskets of prescriptions or reverse prescriptions as much as you can. You attend to over-the-counter queries where patients come in, maybe they have this rash or they have a high infection and you recommend something to them over the counter. The new thing that we do in community as well is that we provide services such as blood pressure check for people that are under the M, um, they are over the age of 40s, they are not on blood pressure medication and this is something that they are doing to sort of catch if anyone has, an, has a tendency of having a high blood pressure and we can immediately refer them to the doctor. That is a service we do. Another service we do is we do the new medicine service where we call them on their new medications to see how they're doing. And we also do flu vaccinations as well. So um, that is technically a community setting. Um, that is what people call the chemist or the roadside, you know, the roadside pharmacy where you need process and you go to them and they will do it. In terms of PCN, the work setting is different. This one you're not working in a community setting like in a shop or store you're working in a gp surgery that's the difference between this one and in the gp surgery you're working alongside other healthcare professionals such as doctors or gps nurse practitioners nurses healthcare assistants receptionists practice managers you know you're working with a diverse range of people and this setting you have your own office space and then you have your task for the day on the system part of the task it could be to call patients and do a medication review with them over the phone or sometimes you have an in-person appointment where the patient comes in on a face-to-face -face basis and you can talk to them through their medication by reviewing their medication this is i think this is very good because this is where um, pharmacists can actually do medication of uh, medicine optimization where you can actually um, sort of try and reduce polypharmacy and what I mean by polypharmacy is that when patients are on so many medications 
for years for some medications some, some, some patients have been on medications for years to the point that you're like is the doctor still treating this sometimes i pick it up in a community but i just i just give it because it's not my role to do and i have too much work that to be chasing and querying things up but being in a gp surgery that's what you do you query those things with the doctors and with the and you have like a direct liaison with the hospital when patients have been discharged as well so when patients have been discharged most likely they have some medication stopped they have no medication started and you sort of go through that with the patient and so you sort of, sort of do like the admin part of it and also still see patients especially people that are on chronic conditions chronic conditions like blood pressure condition diabetes asthma clinics I mean, um, contraceptives all those chronic conditions you see them or you can even see some minor illness as well in the pharmacy as the nurses also see patients as well on certain conditions so that is the differences in terms of work setting so in terms of uh, patient interaction in community um, I think I tend to have more patient interaction I would presume um, because they see me like the only difference the only barrier between me and the patient is just the counter and patients can come in and just come and talk to you about their life even though it's not about their medication they just feel so comfortable and they're tired of staying in the house they can just come in and talk to you about oh, their life or why how their cat is not eating what their cat did today how what their what new toys their dogs got you know all those things like it, it's like a community feel it's so like the community if that makes sense that's what the community in terms of um, patient interaction is in terms of gp you still have but like you still have patient interaction but i feel like it is more or less you're very timed you you have like maybe 10 or 12 minutes for that patient slot and you have to speak to see do what you have to do in that time and also still do the admin work afterwards afterwards and you need to meet up with time you have to be on top of time in terms of um in terms of um gp in terms of patient interaction of course and also as well with patient interaction with gp surgeries that sometimes you might not get to see your patient face to face <laughs> a lot of time so a lot of time your conversation might be over the phone so you don't even know the the personality of the person you're speaking to because you haven't seen the person you're just imagining that over your head likewise for the patient as well and sometimes when patients come like i said they don't have enough time to talk to you and tell you all the stories or how how stretch you want the conversation to be compared to community so in terms of patient interaction those are the differences another difference is that um the scope of practice so the scope of practice of a community like i said you go in you sign as a responsible pharmacist you check prescriptions and deal with the over-the-counter uh, medication why you're checking prescriptions even though that something is not balanced in terms of why is the doctor because i actually had a case over my in my last few days as a local pharmacist where a patient is allergic to penicillin and an ambulance services actually prescribed the patient flu clocks you are you're allergic to penicillin but they still prescribe fluoxetine to you <laughs> like who does that and then they were like oh yeah the patient was allergic because the patient was taking hydroxychloroquine and i was like that doesn't hurt up patient is allergic to penicillin she's allergic to penicillin full stop there is no reason to give them penicillin because they are not taking hydroxychloroquine um, chloroquine it might be better no i don't i don't do type, that type of child's play that is too risky so i was very reluctant and so those are the few queries that you will see in community that you will deal with you can see those of medication like this is a lot it's the patient but like what's the doctor thinking um so the scope of practice is definitely different in local also like i said um you do services alongside seeing patient but you are not really really timed by you need to do this in 10 minutes you need to do that in 10 minutes so you know that you have the whole 10 or 12 hours to be there and you have to get your work done for that day no matter how you want to spread it you can spread it around but you just make sure you still have to get your work done that same day so that is something i have noticed about the scope of practice in local in pcn the scope of practice is different so we you go in you have your list of patients that you're seeing for that day and your list of tasks which could include medication reviews medication um medicine optimization um discharge medicine service or you seeing patients like you're seeing them on chronic illness or you're screening blood results so the scope of practice is more more of a clinical 
way of things because you screen blood tests you see what is wrong with the blood blood test and you call the patient and tell them okay i think this is wrong i think it needs to be on this medication and you need to be placed on this medication and things let me give you a fair share of an example is an example could be okay i've just screened a blood form and a blood result and i found that the patient cholesterol level is high and all the triglycerides or their levels that shows that's high cholesterol that they've got high cholesterol is high so what i would then do is that okay i'll take notes of that call the patient and say oh you got the result for your blood test and this is what it says so and then speak to them about you know lifestyle advice or what are they doing you know are they sedentary or are they more active you know all those things you have that conversation and so sort of now give it to the patient at that point you're now having decision share decision with the patient if they want to be started on a new on a medication to help reduce their cholesterol level or if they want to try the lifestyle changes first and see if that's going to help and from there on move forward so that's what you really do so it's more of a clinical based thing um you literally you're thinking clinically when you're seeing a patient you're seeing them like this is a patient but in community you're seeing the patient as this is a person they are not patient this is a person because they bring everything with you with them to the community so that's the, the, the scope of practice is different and also as well you have meetings with doctors doctors who want certain opinions and things to do with when they are dealing with patients there's a lot of multidisciplinary team um, work that happens in the PCN. Of course, I might do this video later on when I'm more into a PCN role, the way I'll have more idea of like I'll be into it and I'll have more experience. But at the moment, I'm just telling from the little experience I have gathered so far. Um, the last um, key differences is job security and benefits. So, in terms of a local pharmacist, <laughs> job security, there's no job security. So, you, of course, even though there's always a job as a pharmacist which is something that if you are if you choose to be a locum i don't think it's a bad thing because there's always they always need pharmacists like as as, as i'm sitting here my phone is like literally buzzing up and down with shifts like thousands of shifts on a daily basis so there's always jobs for you to do but the thing in terms of job security is that because you're local, you're self-employed, they can decide, you know, that they don't want you, they want someone else and you're already on your way and you have to go home. And there could be some time, dry moments in the year where there is no shift at all. And I think those moments are around like the May, May, June, that like there's no, there's no shift at all. So you have no choice, you'll be doing less uh, than, than what you would have done to gain your same amount of money that you make on a monthly basis. So um, and benefits as well, you don't have any benefits. So if you don't work, you don't get paid. So if you're calling sick, you're not entitled to any statutory sick pay. Um, if you go on holiday, you're not getting paid for that. Um, so you literally get paid when you work, which is like pay as you go, as I call it, I call it pay as you go. So in terms of job security and benefits, it's not very great in terms of, because you're self-employed, yeah, there's a job there could be a job and there could not be a job so you could end up having good money and you could end up not having good money so that is a a bit downside with locum but the PCN rules the permanent contracts rule so that the job security is there you know that your job you have your job and you're entitled to all the benefits such as um annual leaves and um, statutory sick pay and um, pension schemes which you are not entitled to when you're a locum so all the benefits you get as a permanent worker you get it as a PCN pharmacist compared to being a locum because a locum you're a lone ranger and as a PCN pharmacist you're working with people and the company's interest, the, the company sort of have your best interest at, at heart and you can negotiate anything with the benefits that you want. So those are the main key differences between a locum pharmacist and a PCN pharmacist. So in terms of personal experiences, um, like, I, like I told you initially from my previous video, which I'll put here, I talked about the fact that my personal experience with locum wasn't that great. Of course, I had the pros and cons of it. Um, the process of course i had good money which is okay who doesn't like good money but however the, the 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 discomfort i gained for those good money was next to none you no know, studying for hours can't feel your legs after standing for at least 10 hours 12 hours non-stop and some pharmacies i feel like the regular pharmacists in some pharmacies decide to leave a lot of work for the locum for the next day because they know that the locum is coming and then you come in and you're like you nearly you walk you walk into like it's like you see you know when you see a flood of kittens or, um, or goats and they just uh, trying to come to overwhelm you you just see that basket of prescriptions that needs to be checked like 
hundreds i think that was the day i checked over 500 prescriptions 500 baskets and i literally i could not feel my shoulders after the end of the day i literally came home even soaking in the bath to help me relax it's as if i went to the gym and i didn't go to the gym and it just wasn't good for health wise and it's it's not it's not the best it's just a lot and it's just it's just too much so my personal experience for me with looking wasn't that great but of course in terms of money the money is there but in terms of PCN I feel like I feel more comfort um, rather than when I was a local pharmacist um, I have my office I can sit for as long as I want I can stand for as long as I want so I can really balance out my fit my, my activities to be fit the only pressure I have is time but I am still doing it under comfort if that makes sense another thing is that in terms of day-to-day -day experiences challenges as well uh, patients can be very very mad with you in a community like to the point that they might want to beat you up sometimes and you have to deal with it but personally for me i just walk away or i just try my best my very very best to meet you at the point of your needs but so there are some things that we we as pharmacists we don't have much power to do i don't have that power i'm limited sometimes patients don't understand that so that can be quite difficult in having to deal with um, difficult patients in a community but in patient i doubt that I've actually met difficult patients. Even if I've met difficult patients, I know that I only have 10 minutes with you and I need to ask about your medication. Yes, 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 and you go. I don't have to spend so much time. I, in, in community, the patient can decide to say, I'm not leaving until you sort me out. And you have no choice. But in GP or PCN, you have to leave. I have other patients I need to see. And that is the option of where you can call the patient over the phone and the patient doesn't have to come to you in person especially if they are not the very nicest patient so you can just like can i not just see you can i just talk to them on the phone and try to sort it out so those were the few challenges in terms of differences for me and i feel like i'll rather pick the um the present than the former so i think i'm good i'll rather just choose my bottles wisely to be fair um in terms of education and training requirements um you don't need any we heard that you need an mfarm degree you need to be qualified as a pharmacist for both but in terms of education as a local i don't think you have any more opportunity to learn something as you go because you you're not at the same pharmacy every day and each company would not want to train as they would train someone that's permanently contracted to them so you actually learn on the go with any small opportunity you find you don't have this like set down trainings for you something like that no but in terms of pcn there's a set training it's, which is like hospital where there's like a founded like they call it like a step training in some hospitals where it's you have like a three years rotational thing and you connect it to a university and you do your clinical diploma and things like that which is the same with gp practice you do your clinical diploma training with them and after that you move on you move on there's always an opportunity for progression but once you finish that then you know that the next thing i'm doing is my independent prescribing course and then after you become an independent prescriber you have opportunity to say okay the next time i want to do this extra diploma so i can specialize in this so there's always opportunity to do things and because you are getting trained by the company it's not coming out of your pocket so it's, it's like a win-win for both of you where you get to learn and they get to support you if that makes sense meanwhile as a locum because you're a locum and self-employed you do everything by yourself and you don't get any benefit from the companies that you work with at all um in terms of job satisfaction and career consideration um weighing both of them together now i think i am more satisfied as a pcn pharmacist rather than a locum like i said i know i made more money as a locum but it's not everything is not about making money if that makes sense it's um, life is not all about money money is good but life is not all about it there are other things that are as important as money for me is i don't want to be like a zombie because i'm working i don't want to be a, a grumpy person because i'm working i want to be my happy self because i'm working and my work is not stressing me because once i'm stressed i'm grumpy and i won't be able to give my all to my patients so in terms of job satisfaction i'm more satisfied as a pcn compared to being a local pharmacist um 
in that sense money wise of course local pharmacy is more satisfied gives more satisfaction because you make more money um, compared to pcn but it's okay like i said but that's the pros for that um another thing is that in terms of career um consideration as well there is more ca uh, more career pathway to follow when you're a pcn pharmacist compared to locum you're locum you're locum that's how you can be but as a pcn pharmacist you can become like I said, independent prescriber, there's someone I even spoke that she was like, oh, I'm now working at the clinical pharmacist at the CC, CQC, um, and CQC are the people that, um, that actually inspect every healthcare professionals or every healthcare setting in the health, health sector to make sure that they actually meet the standards and policy. And you, you could, once you become independent prescriber, you could actually go into digital health, or you could move into industry because you have the clinical knowledge. You could, you could even move into medical affairs because you have that clinical knowledge and things like that. In making policies because you've worked directly a lot with patients as well so in terms of career consideration i would have i would definitely weigh the pcn one more than locum in terms of career so um that's that in terms of jobs and career consideration so and i think those are where the main differences i have between being a locum pharmacist and be a pcn pharmacist so if you have a um, student like you're almost like a final and you're trying to decide which area of pharmacies you want to go trust me this is not just the only rules i know we all have this you know like this medical um community hospital or industry even industry just research and development that it's that is more than that you can start to become a product manager you can start to become a ui ux designer as a pharmacist you can do whatever you can go into finance you could become a lawyer there's a pharmacist there's a lawyer as well so there's so many things you could do with being a pharmacist so this is just me comparing two areas that I have experienced personally but i know there are more opportunities out there that you could try if you don't want, want a patient facing role you can move to a non-patient facing role so um i hope this makes sense so yeah those are my differences um let me know if you know any other difference if you are currently a patient pharmacist or you're a local pharmacist let me know in the comment section what you actually why why you like being a local or why you like being a patient let me know in the comment section and we can actually see what differences everybody enjoy and why they go for one and not the other so that with that being said thank you so much for watching my video again guys thank you thank you so much for watching and um, i'm glad that i'm literally doing this thing back to back i'm really excited to be back on here if you're new please do not forget to subscribe to my channel like my video especially this one and don't forget to watch the other videos as well guys go and watch those videos like it takes a lot of work to put them together so please support your girl and go and watch those videos and also share with your friends i love you sharing and yeah thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you all in my next one have a good evening bye